Hello, everyone, and uh, welcome to the Lister Trader webinar. I am really glad so many of you could uh, make it here on uh, such a short notice. My name is uh, Chris Lassen, and I'm really excited to present here today. We have a lot of good stuff coming up, uh, so this will be a um, great presentation here today. I am dialing in from uh, Berlin, Germany. The uh, Leaves have uh, started falling over here now. It's uh, heading heading into uh, fall weather uh, with some colder temperatures. And uh, yeah, I don't mind so much personally. Uh, we had a really, really warm uh, summer here this year. So uh, it's easier to uh, think clearly with, uh, with more uh, continental and uh, winterly um, temperature here. So... That's uh, that's always good when uh, when you're working with system trading, which uh, I will talk a little bit about uh, here today. I will just do a uh, quick uh, test of uh, visual and sound to make sure everything uh, works correctly to start off here. So uh, please type in a Y or a yes if you can hear me all right and uh, if you see the Illicit Trader logo here on the first slide. All right. Yeah. Okay. So I see the yeses are flying in here. Uh, okay. That's good. Uh, looks to be working fine here. So I had uh, originally planned to uh, talk about the uh, zero lag uh, oscillator today, which we added uh, to our website uh, earlier this uh, month. It's a new indicator that we are offering. Uh, but seeing that uh, the CME changed their market hours uh, this week, we had a lot of questions on uh, session templates and uh, why we use them and how to use them. So I'll talk a little bit about this uh, to start off with. Uh, we will uh, uh, go over that. So if you're not familiar with uh, the concept of session templates, I'll do a brief introduction on uh, what they are and uh, why they are important. They will help us isolate important um, price data or price information where institutional investors are active in the market. So this is really where the rubber meets the road, so to speak, and where uh, important uh, price points are created. So I will then uh, a little bit uh, later, about, uh, yeah, I'd say 20 minutes into the 20 or 30 minutes into the presentation, I'll start talking about the uh, zero lag oscillator, uh, which I said we just, uh, added to our product offering. And um, this is a really useful addition to the um, session indicators that we already have on offer. Basically, um, this uh, helps us uh, time our market entries and um, makes it uh, a lot easier to evaluate the uh, risk reward ratio of uh, the trading opportunities that we are looking at. So we'll then uh, also go over a, a trading strategy using the uh, Lizard Trader indicators uh, towards the end of the webinar. And uh, we'll do a, a backtest to verify that this concept uh, that we're working on here is uh, sound. And then um, hopefully we'll have uh, time also to look at some trades that we took uh, recently. And um, uh, yeah, to create this, the strategy that we're uh, working on here today, we are using a NinaTrader add-on, which is called uh, Bloodhound. And if you're not familiar with the uh, Bloodhound, then you are in for a treat, as uh, this is a really helpful tool to uh, structure your thoughts uh, around trading, uh, how to set uh, simple rules for identifying trade setups, and going over the condition that you'll uh, want to see before uh, you enter a trade. And uh, Bloodhound can really help you uh, stick to those rules. So uh, that will probably be uh, very interesting for you if you're not familiar with that uh, piece of uh, software. And uh, if you stay around until the end of the webinar here today, you will um, also find out how to get uh, Bloodhound basically for, uh, for free. It's normally um, $4.95, so uh, you probably don't want to, uh, to miss out on that. Um, so make sure that you stay around until the end of the webinar. Uh, you'll also then uh, know how and why we use session templates, uh, uh, where it makes sense to enter and exit the market, and uh, really how to create a profitable uh, trading strategy with these concepts that we're going uh, over here today. So like I said, a lot of good stuff uh, coming up here. Um, 
Now, I should mention that we have both uh, uh, novice and advanced traders with us uh, here today. So one of my challenges will be to balance the presentation to uh, keep it uh, interesting for everyone. So if you're an advanced users, user, um, just please bear with me as I will probably explain some things that are obvious to you. And uh, if you're on the other side of, uh, of that specter, then uh, Stick around until the end because we will have a Q&A session uh, where you can uh, uh, get uh, clarification on some uh, loose ends that we might uh, might have then. So um, before we get going here, I will uh, just add our customer disclaimer here. And this is uh, basically saying that uh, trading is associated with uh, considerable risk. Uh, make sure that you understand that and uh, keep in mind that the results from the strategy that we're going over here today are hypothetical and not based on actual performance. If you're not familiar with the, the Lister Trader team, a uh, quick intro. We are based in Berlin, Germany, as uh, I mentioned. Uh, most of you are familiar with Harry, also known as Fat Tails. He's uh, well known throughout the Nina Trader community, both uh, in the Nina Trader support forum and over at Big Mac Trading. So he's programmed some of the most uh, downloaded indicators uh, for the uh, NinoTrader platform, including uh, the tools that we will present here today. As for myself, I'm the co-founder and CEO of Lizard Trader. I've been a part of the NinoTrader community for the last five years or so. I um, ran a software company uh, up until recently that focused on um, market sentiment data. Uh, we had a uh, uh, machine learning and uh, artificial intelligence algorithm that uh, detected uh, uh, sentiment and financial news language. So scanning financial publications and uh, uh, basically finding out whether the uh, investors were likely to be in a bullish or a, a bearish mood and uh, teaming that data piece of data up to uh, uh, algorithmic trading models and managed futures products. So um, that's uh, that's my background. I uh, uh, exited that uh, company last year, and then uh, it's a little bit too early for me to retire. So uh, I teamed up with uh, Harry here to uh, to start Lizard Trader, and uh, yeah, I'm very uh, very happy with uh, with that decision so far. So uh, let's get going here. I um, uh, trading session. Uh, let's uh, let's talk about what a trading session is. It's a uh, uh, one uh, business day in the financial markets uh, from open to close. So um, all orders of the day have to be placed within that uh, time frame. So originally, when we uh, talk about trading sessions, that referred to the floor session when traders and brokers met physically in the trading pit. That's uh, uh, not the case anymore, but uh, that's uh, that's the background for this concept. So, since the introduction of um, electronic markets, uh, this concept of a trading session has really broadened. So, uh, for example, if we have the um, S and P uh, 500 e mini contract, uh, the uh, Default session template, the new one, uh, will have a uh, chart from uh, 5 p.m. Central Time until uh, 4 p.m. Central Time. So that includes uh, all the information available, including the night session, the regular session, and the evening session. So for most uh, in instruments, um, important volatility and volume levels are created during the regular trading hours. And uh, that's uh, uh, originally the, the floor session. So the, the cash session or uh, the time when uh, people in the local markets uh, in Chicago, for example, uh, have their, their office hours. So um, it's therefore useful to distinguish between this session and the electronically traded session. So commodities, uh, equities, and bond markets, they all have really strong pit traditions, and uh, uh, they may ha have a bias towards uh, the price benchmarks that were uh, created during the regular traded hours. So 
Uh, this is not the case for uh, other other markets such as uh, the uh, the forex markets. Um, there was never really a local exchange with uh, local trading trading times that uh, influenced the entire market. So this makes uh, the uh, extended trading hours uh, uh, and session template more appropriate for forex instruments. So we can, based on this, choose which levels, uh, price levels to access the uh, extended trading hours or the regular trading hours uh, by using the NinaTrader instrument and session manager. I'm not going to go into the specifics uh, of this. That's uh, a little bit too uh, um, in detail of uh, going into the instrument and session manager at this point. I'm going to talk a little bit about uh, how to use this, this concept so that you really understand the background for this. And then uh, there are plenty of uh, tutorials and videos on how to set up your, your session manager. And uh, we also have the session template handbook for that. So if you need more specific information on this, that's uh, where you can get that. So uh, sometimes the picture says a thousand, thousand words. Uh, uh, so what we're talking about here uh, is a uh, pivot indicator. This is the pivot listed trader pivot indicator on a 15-minute um, chart. Uh, again, it's the uh, E-mini S&P 500. Uh, and we really want to be using the high and the low and the close of yesterday's regular uh, uh, session as uh, that's when the um, Underlying equities, underlying equities for the, uh, the this contracts, this contract are, are traded. So that's really what matters uh, for how this contract is priced. As you can see, the um, price that does react to the first uh, supports and and resistance levels. And um, if we had taken the high of the uh, extended trading session here then we would have a very different picture and uh, have completely different support and resistance levels. And uh, as you see here, the price does not really react uh, uh, in the same way to the levels. It's just kind of oscillating around a very wide pivot range. So uh, I think this is a good example as to why you want to isolate the uh, price action that is taking place in the regular session for the the e mini s p 500 contract and not use the uh, the price action that is taking place overnight when the asian and european markets are open it's of course reflecting what's going on in the rest of the world but it doesn't really have anything to do with the underlying values uh, of this uh, contract itself so that's uh, that's really what matters um, for this instrument So to sum up, uh, you want to isolate uh, the uh, trading session for uh, the regular trading session for markets with a local bias and uh, uh, with a strong floor trading tradition. Uh, these are traditionally uh, commodities, equities, and bond markets. And uh, Forex instruments, on the other hand, are globally traded markets with uh, less of a local bias, so that makes um, ETH templates uh, more appropriate for those. So now that we're on the topic of uh, pivot levels, let's uh, just do a, a quick rundown on uh, what this is all about. For those who you are not familiar with uh, with it, um, as mentioned, uh, it's a long-established uh, uh, method for calculating support and resistance levels, originally used by um, floor traders. Uh, to find uh, buy and sell levels throughout uh, the trading day. It's not really a big secret uh, about this. We're just working with the range calculation of uh, yesterday's price action to uh, produce um, support and resistance levels. And uh, the range is uh, calculated by taking the high and the low and the close of yesterday, uh, dividing by three. So that's how we get the, the pivot point. And uh, that's what we uh, see here. And uh, by adding 
mathematical cal calculations to the pivot, we then uh, uh, get the support and resistance levels above and below the uh, the pivot here. So most of the time, the price will move within the first and the second uh, support and resistance levels, as this is uh, the the range of yesterday's uh, price movement. So because um, the uh, pivot calculation and the, the method for uh, calculating these buy and sell levels have uh, really widespread uh, use. Uh, these levels have turned into something of a uh, self-fulfilling prophecies. And uh, that's why we often see the, the price react when, uh, when the market um, hit, uh, hit these levels. So another important point uh, is, of course, that uh, these are uh, really objective uh, price reference points um, that are the same for all traders, no matter whether you use daily, hourly, 15 minutes or five minutes or tick charts or range charts, they're going to be the same for everyone. So uh, the high and the low and the close for the regular session, it's, uh, it's the same no matter uh, what kind of chart or bar type uh, you're using. So what we want to do here is to um, basically check that we're not trading straight into a support and resistance um, level uh, before we get into the market. So for example, here we have um, uh, the price moving below the, the pivot and um, it's then a resistance. Uh, so we don't want to go long straight into this uh, resistance level because we're very likely to see a pullback following a test of this level. So once the market has uh, broken the resistance, we can uh, allow long signals as the pivot is now a support level. So then we're at the right side of, uh, of the pivot uh, to go into a long position. It's uh, it's what in Bloodhound is known as, as tailwind. So it's uh, uh, in our back and when it's underneath, it's, uh, it's headwind. So keep that in mind. Um, we want to check before we get into a trade, the distance from these landmark support and resistance levels and uh, compare that to uh, the distance of our stop loss really to find out the, the probability of the trade. I'll talk a little bit more about uh, that later. I'll uh, first go over uh, another indicator that we work with here at Lizard Trader, which is the volume weighted average price. It's a um, poorly kept secret that this is a uh, really institutional benchmark that's used to measure ex execution costs. So brokers and large um, investors have developed uh, sophisticated order execution algorithms to uh, achieve the VWAP of the day or better. And that's uh, now even available for us at the retail level. So if you have an uh, interactive broker, uh, you can uh, submit orders with the VWAP execution. It's going to cost you a little bit extra, of course, but uh, that really shows you uh, how um, mainstream this concept has become and uh, that we're very likely to see significant price action around uh, this benchmark level because uh, so many investors and in particular institutional investors use um, uh, the VWAP uh, to execute their, their orders. And uh, again, this is, uh, this is also a objective, uh, a price benchmark, it's, uh, it's really the same for everyone, no matter uh, what chart or bar type you use. Uh, we're looking at a um, volume weighted uh, mean of uh, all transactions that uh, take place over defined periods. So this can be calculated for all instruments as long as price and volume data is available. So we find the VWAP, uh, the volume weighted average price by adding the prices for every transaction during a uh, trading session and divide by the total contracts traded during that time. So this is a lot easier to understand if we uh, pull up a chart here. Um, 
this too as a uh, uh, session indicator because it's uh, really anchored at the start of the period for which we are uh, recording the transaction. So we can anchor the VWAP uh, for all types of standard periods such as here, this is the, the trading day. Uh, this is again, the E-mini, this is in the five minute chart ES. And um, we can, of course, anchor it uh, in other charts as well, uh, such as uh, a trading week starting on Monday or trading month starting the first day of the month. But I think uh, the most important uh, indicator of the VWAP family is really the, the daily volume weighted average price. So uh, that's what we'll, we'll use here and uh, in the strategy concepts that uh, we are looking at moving forward. So um, the calculation starts with the first transaction and uh, ends with the last. And uh, during the day, then you will see the uh, VWAP is uh, gradually stabilizing. And the more it stabilizes, then the more significant it will be as a benchmark uh, and a technical trading tool. So many <laughs> institutional investors basically use this as uh, part, partly for their job security because um, a good or bad execution will depend uh, on how far away from the VWAP that they uh, bought or sold uh, their contracts or, or, or shares. So uh, that will be of interest for, for their customers. So following this, uh, this logic, you can use the uh, first standard deviation bands of the VWAP, uh, that's uh, the light blue area here, uh, to represent a value area. And that's really where most transactions are likely to take place and uh, an area where we as retail investors um, can catch new trends, mini trends early on. So if we're in an uptrend, as you see here, just after the cash open, institutional uh, VWAP algorithms will uh, try to uh, buy when the price retrace back to the VWAP band, taking advantage of uh, prices that are really close to the uh, to the average here. And that's good execution. If it's, uh, <laughs> if it's really far away from the VWAP band, then it's bad execution and, and uh, it's not going to look so good on the job review. So keep that in mind. So the reason why uh, the VWAP and uh, pivot point uh, uh, indicators produce reliable price benchmark is that they are well established and uh, they produce the same price levels for everyone. So they're object ob objective. And uh, that's what we, uh, uh, why we call them leading indicators as uh, they can really alert us of something which is about to happen before it actually does happen. So that's a significant advantage to, uh, to using uh, these, these tools for your trading. Now, uh, this is not the case for what we call lagging indicators. Lag indicator, indicator is uh, such as a moving average. So uh, a moving average crossover will tell us something uh, about the market that has already taken place. And uh, for us as, uh, as traders, that's uh, not really very useful. So even more troubling um, about uh, these indicators is that they really sort of miss what technical analysis is all about. So. Um, Technical trading will only work if uh, enough traders react in a coordinated way when looking at um, chart patterns and support and resistance levels. And the problem here is that uh, we're all looking at different stuff if we're uh, using uh, these types of indicators. So a 200-day uh, moving average uh, for support and uh, resistance will be very different uh, than uh, if you're looking at a a hundred or a fifty-day moving average, and uh, there is no standard here. There's just an assumption that uh, okay, most people use two hundred or they use one hundred or fifty, but who knows really? There is no way of knowing uh, how many are using what 
uh, numerical average and and how coordinated the price action will be off of that level so uh, in addition there is also of course multiple ways of uh, uh, calculating these averages so uh, the formulas themselves uh, such as the exponential moving average or the smooth moving average or um, whatever that the, uh, will plot different lines on the chart so uh, that's another source of um, of uh, potential uh, confusion among the market uh, participants as to where the support and resistance levels uh, actually are located and then we can finally continue with the uh, chart settings uh, meaning the uh, time frames uh, that build the bars on the charts themselves obviously we will have uh, different price levels depending on whether uh, you use daily hourly 15 minute bar five minute bars or tick charts uh, will show you some very different stories uh, on the chart so um, yeah lagging indicator is not very uh, very useful for technical trading so how can we use these leading indicators then to uh, to really create a, a profitable trading strategy uh, well uh, as I said, we uh, first want to uh, establish that uh, the price should be moving in this uh, value area of the daily VWAP, and that's uh, within the first standard deviation. That's uh, an area where about 70% statistically of all uh, transactions during the day will take place. And uh, then we will uh, use the zero lag to time our entries uh, uh, for uh for our strategy here and uh that's what we'll uh, talk about next here and uh then we also want to uh monitor our risk by really filtering out trades that go straight into a landmark support and resistance level so i talked about this briefly uh with the pivot levels uh that you want to make sure that you're not trading straight into support uh or resistance and uh really that you have these levels in your back and uh, not straight ahead of you because we're very likely to see pullbacks uh, at these levels but let's uh, first look at the uh, zero lag indicator here and uh, how it can uh, help us with uh, trade entries okay so the zero lag it has uh, three main parts it has uh, the trend filter a histogram and a price action signal. So the trend filter is uh, really pretty easy. If there is a uh, green line, as we see here, then we are looking for long signals. And if it's red, then it's blocking those long signals out because we're in a short motors. And what we, the philosophy of this is uh, really to take uh, retracement signals. And uh, they are the, type of price signals that will allow us to work with really tight stops and uh, cash in on um, high opportunity high probability opportunities when we're uh, right about uh, market uh, timing so the idea is really to step into the market when a um, young trend is about to establish itself uh, we don't want to get into a trend that is over the hill so to speak so ideally uh, you'll want to uh, just participate in the main uh, chunk of it. And that's what uh, the retracement uh, does for us. It's, uh, it's really uh, showing us that we're in a uh, uptrend and uh, we're looking for a retracement where there is a short-term oversold situation. And uh, what will happen then is that the histogram here will uh, uh, alert us of a situation like that by plotting uh, white bars and uh, uh, we then know that there is a pullback into the trend and uh, that a setup trade setup is uh, is coming up so after a uh, white bar has plotted uh, the zero lag will uh, start looking for uh, a sign that buyers are taking advantage of these lower prices and uh, uh, that the uh, trend uh, continues and uh, if there is no renewed buying, if there is no trend continuation after three setup bars, uh, then that means that there are no buyers taking advantage of these lower prices. So 
that's really pointing to a weakness of the bulls and uh, could indicate a trend change. And that's when we start seeing gray bars uh, like this. And uh, that will, uh, in this case, invalidate the, uh, the setup. And uh, another invalidation is, uh, as you see here, it's also turning, it's not just turning gray, it's also going into red here. So that's uh, uh, invalidating uh, any, any long trades. But then uh, shortly thereafter, we see the, uh, the trend does continue and we get a second retracement here uh, with this white bar. And uh, again, the zero lag is then looking for uh, a signal bar a thrust bar with a close um, above the previous high or a um, histogram uh, bar which is higher than the previous one. So if you see either of these, zero lag is going to put uh, a uh, lime green confirmation bar uh, and uh, signal that we can go long at the close of that bar. Uh, in that case, we will set a, a stop below the low of the signal bar or the prior bar whichever is uh, lowest. And then uh, later on, we see uh, other retracements here, and that's what we call uh, pyramid signals. Uh, that will allow us to add to this position. So again, uh, we buy the retracement and uh, would set a uh, new stop for the entire position uh, below the new entry, sort of scaling into the, uh, into the trade here. So for the uh, short uh, side of things, uh, it's pretty much the same with the different colors. Uh, we're looking at short signals when uh, when the line is uh, is red here, and uh, retracement setup uh, will be when uh, there is a short term overbought in a downtrend. So a setup signal will then be uh, indicated by yellow bars like this, uh, signaling a pullback uh, into the into the trend. So after the yellow bar has plotted, uh, the zero lag is going to look for a uh, price action signal that will be a down thrust bar with a close uh, below the previous low or a histogram bar lower than the previous one. And uh, if there is either of these, then uh, the histogram will uh, plot in bright red and we can enter short at the close of that bar and uh, set a stop above the high of the prior bar or the signal bar, whichever is uh, is higher. So again, there has to be a confirmation bar within uh, three bars. For shorts, uh, this will plot uh, in bright red, as I said. And um, in case uh, we missed out on uh, on a good pyramiding signal like we did ha here, uh, we talked about the uh, the gray bars uh, uh, previously that after three setup bars, we, uh, we want to see a confirmation of the trend. Um, so renewed selling pressure. But uh, uh, yeah, in this case, we, we had an invalidation of, uh, of this signal. Um, it was not caused by the gray bars here. In this case, uh, it was actually caused by a, uh, a threshold level that we can see here. And uh, this uh, will prevent us from getting into uh, to trades when the market is, uh, is oversold. So you can, of course, um, adjust these uh, threshold levels to uh, whichever level you, you see fit, uh, depending on volatility in the instrument that you're trading. And the same thing for uh, the gray bars. The uh, uh, gray bar filter can also be, uh, be turned off. So if you want uh, to allow for more time for the retracement to establish uh, itself and uh, look for renewed buying or, or selling, then you can turn the gray bar filter off uh, as well. So what about exits? Well, the, the most sense uh, is uh, really to, to use the uh, second standard deviation of uh, the daily VWAP. Statistically, very few uh, transactions will take place outside the second standard deviation uh, band. So that's really an area where we are likely to have a overbought or oversold scenario, making this a, a really good place to uh, uh, set our profit targets. 
And um, as you see here, uh, the trade uh, was um, uh, entered below the uh, the VWAP in the uh, uh, first within the first standard deviation bands at market value, uh, really catching uh, the trend here uh, fairly fairly early on. Again, uh, if the price is uh, in the black area uh, below the first standard deviation, you'll want to wait until the price is uh, retracing towards the uh, uh, the the daily VWAP before considering the entry. And uh, we also have in the VWAP indicator, as we see here, the previous uh, uh, volume weighted average price levels. And uh, they can be used to locate areas uh, where the market is likely to stop and consolidate. So we had uh, supports here in uh, yesterday's uh, VWAP, and uh, that's working as a uh, logical, um, yeah, also profit target. Uh, it's uh, very likely that the that the market will consolidate when you have uh, the second standard deviation of the current uh, VWAP and the yesterday's uh, VWAP in the same area. That uh, that's going to be a very strong uh, support level. So good area to uh, to exit this trade right here. And we also have the uh, uh, VWAP level of two days ago, uh, sort of working as a uh, support level as well uh, down here. There is also the uh, uh, VWAP level of three days ago, but we haven't um, drawn that as in this, this chart. It's uh, outside of, of this price action right here. So just as with the pivot levels, if we have one of these, um, uh, VWAP levels from yesterday or two day or three days ago, right in front of us, they will really significantly reduce our odds of uh, profitable trade uh, because we're uh, we can expect to find uh, uh, some pretty serious uh, support and resistance uh, around these levels. So that really brings us uh, into the issue of um, looking at uh, risk reward ratios for the trades that we are entering. Potential gain should, of course, uh, always exceed risk. At a minimum, uh, you'll want to be working with a one to two, but uh, preferably one to three or one to four is uh, is, gonna, is going to be, be better for you. So to find these trades, uh, we want to look at uh, how far these landmark supports and uh, resistance levels uh, are away from uh, our enterprise. And then uh, we want to compare that uh, to um, our, our stop loss, which is uh, determined by the zero lag oscillator entry signals. So that's really how we, uh, we find out what the, uh, the risk reward ratio is going to be. So check out how far away are we from uh, the next pivot level or the next uh, a VWAP level and uh, compare that to the stop loss that the uh, zero lag oscillator entry signal uh, gives you. And then you have uh, that risk reward ratio. Okay, so that is the uh, uh, overview of, uh, of the strategy that we're working with here. We're we want to make sure that the price is within the first standard deviation of uh, the VWAP. And uh, we want to take the uh, retracement signals from the zero lag and uh, then measure how far away are we from the next uh, logical support and resistance levels and comparing that to the stop loss as uh, determined by our entry signals. So having used these uh, simple steps, let's uh, look at how this has performed in a uh, back test over the last year. This is, uh, again, the E-mini ES uh, contract. So a variation of uh, this will also work on other instruments, uh, of course. Uh, we're looking here at a one-year time window. and. Uh, a total profit for one contract of uh, about uh, 
8,500. And uh, you will have to uh, subtract for slippage and commissions here. I have uh, not included that in uh, this back test. Uh, so I'm really using uh, some stop loss and profit target settings that are uh, quite different than how I actually trade this uh, uh, in the charts. Uh, so the stop loss is uh, it's a hard stop and a profit target based on a ATR. So ATR of um, uh, three and uh, one one point five, so uh, one to two uh, risk reward ratio, and uh, yeah, that's uh, the the easiest way of uh, of testing this uh, this concept. It's uh, uh, very difficult to uh, create a dynamic stop loss and profit target uh, um, based on this concept in. Uh, in Bloodhound, so I've just used the, the standard calculation here based on an ATR, and it looks to be uh, fairly fairly stable. Again, um, the time window that we are uh, trading here is the uh, regular session, uh, trading this uh, uh, after 45 minutes uh, of the cash open and uh, until the uh, end of uh, the regular session. So this is a, uh, a performance curve, pretty consistent and stable, but uh, keep in mind that there is uh, really no strategy that works for all times and all markets. So volatility changes and market regime changes. So um, that said, I think uh, there is room for improvements uh, in this concept with the uh, tighter stops and pyramiding signals and trading stops as I showed in the chart here, and that's uh, uh, not reflected in this backtest. So this will be optimized in, uh, in live trading. So let's uh, have a look at uh, some trade setups and uh, maybe show also how this uh, is set up in, in Bloodhound. So here we have a uh, trade in uh, the NASDAQ uh, E-mini. Uh, here you see we have a price within the first standard deviation of the um, daily VWAP. And uh, we have just uh, gone, uh, gone above here the, uh, the daily VWAP band. And uh, it's... Uh, a entry here, uh, which well, let's set the set the stop loss here. Uh, that's not the the line that I wanted to to use here. So it's uh, it's the same one. Uh, so it's this one. Yeah. Okay. So uh, then the question is, uh, what is the um, the stop loss for for this one. So we enter here at uh, 43.35, and the stop loss is at 43.30. So it's a stop loss of um, a risk of uh, five points, and um, uh, to find the potential reward of this, I will look at the uh, the pivot levels so this is the the same situation here and i will now measure the uh, the distance from the entry here at 35 th 43.35 until the low of yesterday a little bit before it so let's say it's at uh, 43.55 so it's a potential gain here of uh, 20 points so a, uh, a risk reward ratio of uh, one to four so that's uh that's a that's a pretty good uh, uh risk reward ratio and also as you see here when we get the signal uh, we've just passed this uh first support level when the price is trading below this it's uh it's uh resistance and when it's above 
uh, than it is uh, support. So uh, we've broken through <coughs> support at the signal bar here, uh, broken through the resistance at the at the signal bar here, and then uh, we're using this as a uh, as a tailwind. And uh, yeah, this is uh, the the combination of uh, the pivot levels and the uh, uh, the the VWAP is is very helpful in evaluating the setups. And then, uh, as you see here, we're using the uh, retracements uh, into into this uh, green trend here to uh, to take the uh, the entry signal. So the price action signal here in this case is a thrust bar with a close uh, above the high of the previous bar. And uh, I'll also show you now quickly how this is set up in uh, in Bloodhound. If you're not familiar with it, let's see here, pull this dialog box over. And this is where we have the uh, conditions set up. This is a, uh, a comparison between uh, price and uh, the uh, VWAP band of the daily, uh, daily VWAP, the first standard deviation. And then we have uh, the pivot levels here. <clears throat> So there is a support and resistance uh, solver in Bloodhound that will measure the distance that we have uh, away from these uh, support and resistance levels. And uh, the same for the previous VWAP levels. And then we have the uh, zero lag long and short retracements and pyramid signals. And our time session solver is also added in here. And, uh, can look at how this is displayed in the uh, logic uh, tree. This is a really neat feature of uh, Bloodhound. It's uh, visual programming. So even if you're not a, a programmer, I'm not a programmer myself, but uh, I do understand how to use this. So uh, it's really, really great uh, to uh, test it immediately on your charts if uh, your condition or if your, your rule is doing what you're expecting it to do. So, uh, like I said, a, a really good way to uh, um, structure the thoughts that you have about trading setups and uh, ideas on how to create uh, trading strategies. All right, so uh, see that we are starting to run low low on, on time here. So I think I'll go back into the uh, the presentation here. Uh, if I can manage to to do that again. Okay, so let's pull up uh, where we were on the slide here. I think there was uh, this performance curve was the last slide. Okay, let's uh, continue with this. Now I'm going to, uh, to talk about um, the opportunity that you have here uh, today to start using this uh, setup and this uh, concept for your own trading. Um, basically, what I've, uh, uh, if, if, if you decide that this is uh, something for you, um, like I mentioned, a Bloodhound is thrown in basically for free here today. So you can start using uh, this setup pretty much uh, straight away. Uh, and uh, yeah, like I said, I've uh, worked with the strategies for for years, and I recently discovered Bodan, and really makes it uh, a lot easier to uh, to work in a systematic uh, uh, <coughs> trading environment. You can also use this to uh, set alerts for when uh, a setup appears, and then uh, you don't really have to sit uh, glued in front of your computer all day waiting for something to happen. So that's also a really neat uh, feature uh, about this, and. Uh, they have a great uh, support team and uh, weekly workshop uh, classes as well to uh, help you get going. And uh, yeah, I can really just uh, recommend this. Uh, so what I've done here is uh, to put everything that we've just covered in the webinar, uh, everything that we talked about into a package to uh, help you implement uh, this approach. So. The session VWAPs uh, consist of uh, uh, daily and weekly and monthly and rolling and rolling VWAPs. Uh, should you 
want to expand on this uh, concept on your own, uh, there is uh, definitely uh, many ways of uh, adding adding to this with the uh, weekly, monthly, and rolling uh, VWAP indicators. Uh, the same thing can be said for the pivots. In addition to the daily pivots, we have uh, weekly, monthly, and also rolling pivots. And we also have uh, something that's called the Jackson zones. And uh, that's all included in the package here. The zero lag, of course, as I mentioned, uh, containing a trend filter, uh, the histogram, and uh, the setup that uh, the histogram uh, alerts us of, and then finally, the price action signals. So Bloodhound, I already uh, talked about. So for those of you that don't have uh, Bloodhound, normal price for all of this would uh, be in the neighborhood of 1200 bucks. Um, but we've also added some uh, special bonuses here today to, to sweeten the deal. So the first uh, bonus is our session template handbook, which is uh, really useful if you're working with the uh, session indicator. So this will really show you how to isolate the trading sessions uh, that I talked about uh, in the beginning here today and really find out where institutional traders are active and uh, uh, really where they leave their footprint, uh, so to speak. Uh, it's important to, to find out uh, where there is going to be price action uh, zones throughout the day. So we also have... Um, uh, added all the important instruments here in this uh, handbook. So this will make it a lot easier for you to uh, set your charts up uh, uh, correctly and uh, to get going on this. Of course, the uh, strategy template that we talked about here today is uh, included. So uh, you can uh, get started on this uh, as soon as uh, you like. The um, total value for all of this is uh, just shy of uh, 1400 bucks uh, and uh, the deal price today is uh, 895 and that's uh, pretty close to a 35 percent discount off the normal price um, so that's what I mean when the the bloodhound software is basically in this uh, deal here for free today and um, uh, we are a, a Bloodhound partner, of course, and uh, the reason that we're offering this this way is uh, because we're absolutely convinced uh, of this uh, product and uh, that it will make you more structured and uh, uh, make it easier to implement the setup uh, that I've shown you here today. So um, if you already have Bloodhound, uh, then uh, you have a additional 300 bucks off, so a total of uh, 595 for the session indicators, the zero lag, the strategy template, and uh, the session template handbook. So I guess uh, most of you are already aware that uh, an inner trader eight is uh, just around the corner. We will uh, need to update all of our indicators for the new version. And uh, there are quite a bit of costs uh, coming up for us uh, for this project. So uh, that basically means that for the uh, Ninja Trader 8, we will have to adjust uh, our prices upwards uh, 20 to 30 percent in the coming weeks. But we will wait uh, in doing that until after the launch of uh, Ninja Trader 8. So uh, that basically means uh, that if you take action on this now, uh, there will be a free upgrade for you uh, for Ninja Trader 8 when uh, our indicators uh, become available for the new version. So uh, think about that. If <laughs> what, what you would rather have a uh, price in increase in uh, of 20 to 30 percent uh, in a few weeks, or a uh, discount of uh, 30 to 40 percent uh, right now. So I personally, I think I know the answer to that one. Um, uh, one thing's for sure, this will uh, never be offered at a lower price than it is now. And uh, uh, yeah, we don't expect to have this up for, for much longer. So um, 
take action to uh, to avoid uh, disappointment uh, on this. Okay, so with that, uh, I think I've uh, reached the uh, the Q and A um, session, and uh, let's see. Wow, there's a lot of questions here. So uh, I see that we're already running uh, very close to overtime here. So I probably won't have time to answer all of your questions now, but uh, uh, I will try to get back to all of you via email. So uh, I'll just uh, go over a, a couple of uh, the questions here. So should uh, Tom asks, uh, should we change the session template uh, following the CME change? OK, so uh, the short answer to that is, uh, is no. Uh, we don't recommend uh, in doing that uh, for a number of reasons. And we have uh, written a, a blog post on this uh, this week. Um, basically, this is a, uh, an issue of uh, backtest results. So um, if you do change your session template now, then you will uh, lose data uh, in in your back test. So um, it will cut off some of the data that was actually uh, traded. So that's, uh, we consider this uh, a, a drawdown, a, a, a drawback, excuse me. So uh, we do not uh, recommend to, uh, to change the session template uh, right now. And um, you, can write, uh, you can read a little bit more about this uh, in our blog. We have uh, really looked at this from a couple of uh, angles and uh, really haven't found any good arguments for updating the, uh, the session template at this point. So um, yeah, that's the short answer to that. Go to, go to the Lizard Trader blog and uh, read more about it there. OK, John asks uh, if uh, the price here is a yearly license and how many licenses do we get? Uh, okay, so this is a uh, one-time price. So uh, you don't have to pay for this every year. It's a, it's a one-off. And uh, you do get uh, two licenses uh, or two machine. Uh, you can run this on, on two machines per license. So um, that's pretty standard, I think. Uh, Deb asks, uh, what if volume information is incomplete, i.e. Forex instruments? Yeah, so the deal with the uh, Forex is um, that uh, there is no centrally located exchange that has uh, access to all the volume data uh, for the Forex uh, market. So uh, that makes it uh, unreliable and incomplete. And uh, to compensate for that, we have uh, created a uh, uh, range volume, a range weighted average price. And that's uh, very close to uh, the VVAP. We've done some uh, comparisons on this. And um, it's a very, very accurate calculation to, to simulate uh, uh, volume information. So that's, uh, that's the way we, uh, we deal with that. I have uh, created a uh, trading strategy uh, for the euro based on exactly this concept, uh, but uh, eliminating the volume information, replacing it with, uh, uh, with the RVAP and also a, a regression trend filter in the zero lag. So that's not based on a, a volume weighted average uh, trend. And uh, yeah, maybe I'll, <clears throat> I'll do a webinar on uh, how to create a, a strategy using um, Forex instruments on this uh, setup uh, coming up. So uh, stay tuned for that to come. Um, sign up uh, uh, for our newsletter uh, in our blog. And uh, I will let you know when we have a webinar on that coming up. OK, so Bill asks if this concept, if this setup applies to other instruments uh, than the e -minis. Yes, I guess I just answered that with uh, uh, the strategy that I've created for the euro on this. Uh, I'm also testing this on, on crude. And uh, basically, this is a, uh, a universal 
uh, concept that uh, really works uh, across uh, many different contracts and uh, uh, it's uh, something that you can use uh, for all markets and uh, you you really need to adjust a little bit. Uh, every market has its uh, signature, so uh, adjust for volatility and uh, uh, trading times and and other things that are uh, important in terms of creating these price benchmarks. But uh, other than that, it's uh, it's really something that uh, should work for uh, a lot of uh, different instruments and uh, and trading styles. So Chuck. Uh, asks, uh, are there other indicators, listed trader indicators coming up for this? Yes, we do have a uh, planned uh, launch of a couple of uh, additional indicators that we have. Uh, maybe not for this specific setup, but we will uh, show some other uh, setups with uh, other indicators. Um, again, if you're interested in following along of uh, what we're doing, sign up uh, for our uh, uh, blog newsletter if you haven't already done so, so and we will um, uh, send out a newsletter when we have uh, updates. So Douglas asks uh, the difference between the 595 and the 895 offer. Okay, so 895 is uh, if you don't have Bloodhound and if you want Bloodhound, then uh, it's uh, 895 if you already have Bloodhound, uh, then it's 595. If you don't want to use Bloodhound, then it's also 595. So, <laughs> so regardless, um, it's uh, 595 um, if you only want the, uh, the Lizard Trader indicators and, and use this for discretionary trading. Uh, if you want to do system trading and have the support of Bloodhound, it's uh, 895 if you don't already have it. Okay, so I think that is it uh, for uh, today. That's uh, what we had time for. Like I said, um, I will try to get uh, back to uh, all of you that uh, didn't have your uh, questions answered by email. Uh, I would like to uh, thanks everyone for checking in. I hope this has been uh, of uh, value for you and uh, I look forward to welcoming you as a uh, listed trader in the near future. Thanks again and bye-bye.